Okay, here we're going to be using the direct cash flow method to determine our cash flow statement. And this is where we use the actual cash flows through our cash account. And we're going to be using this equation here, where assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. So what I've done here with assets, I've broken it apart between the cash asset here and all other assets. So let's go down and look at how we'd uh, set up our equation. And for our assets here, we'd have the change in cash plus all these other assets equal our change in liabilities plus our change in stockholders equity. So uh, what I've done here is I've moved this change or this change in other assets over to the other side of the equation. So what we would have here is a change in cash equals minus the change in all the other assets plus the change in liabilities plus this change in stockholders equity. Okay, let's look at our change in cash for investing activities. And that would be where we're looking at the company's non-operating long-term assets. So if we go down to our accounting equation here, uh, let's say, for example, we had an increase in these long-term uh, non-operating assets here. So what that increase equates over to in our cash change would be a decrease in our cash do the arithmetic here. And in the case here where we had a decrease in these long-term assets, it would be an increase here in our cash account. So if we go down here and just look at our uh, these long-term assets here in our T accounts, where we uh, it makes sense here because an increase or debit amount here in these uh, long-term assets would be a credit here to our cash. And vice versa, a reduction here in these long-term assets would be a debit here or an increase in our cash. So if we go over here and just look at our cash flow statement for investing activities, first we'd be looking at our cash inflows. And they would be like this for the sale of property, plant, and equipment, or the sale of a debt or equity security um, th that we own of another entity, or if we're collecting principal on a loan from another entity. And then our cash outflows would be like for the purchase of property, plant, and equipment, or the purchase of these debt or equity securities. And then what we would do is we'd be looking at the difference here between the cash inflows and the cash outflows, and that would be the net cash provided or used by these investing activities. Okay, looking at our change in cash flow for financing activities, now those would be our non-operating long-term liabilities and shareholders equity. So if we go down here and look at our accounting equation here where we have an increase in the change of liabilities that transfers over to a change in cash, an increase in the change in cash and a decrease here in our change in liabilities transfers over to a decrease in cash. And the same for our uh, shareholders equity accounts. Any increases translate over to a change in cash increase and any decreases would reduce the change in cash decreases. Now we have to be careful here when we get down to our contra accounts and those would be like our dividends here those are the cash that we pay to our uh, uh, shareholders so an increase here in our shareholders equity and diff dividends would be a reduction here in the change of cash and same for treasury stock when we buy it back here and increase our shareholders equity that would reduce our cash now if we go down here and look or up here and look at our T accounts uh, we'll see that we have our dividends here as uh, shareholders earned capital and our contributed uh, shareholders contributed capital would be like our common stock, preferred stock, and then our contra account here, our treasury stock. And then our liabilities here would be showing like um, bonds that we uh, issued to our bondholders. And then you can see here the effect that it has on our cash account for each one of those debits and credits. So let's go down here and look at our cash flow statement for financing activities. So our cash inflows here would be for the sale of equity securities, that would be stocks, and the issuance of debt securities, bonds and notes. And then our cash outflows would be like for the dividends to shareholders, redemption of long term a debt or the redemption of capital stock. So then we look at the difference here between our cash inflows and cash outflows. And then we'd have our net cash provided or used by financing activities. Our change in cash for operating activities, that would include our revenues, expenses, cost of goods sold that are included in net income. And we're, what we're looking at here is the change in cash provided by these operations. And that change in cash here for operating activities would include our short-term assets and liabilities. 
So if we go down here and look at our accounting equation here, where we have a change in our liabilities here, uh, of say a positive amount of 1500 that translates over here to a change in cash at the same, uh, same of $1,500 or the same amount. And a negative change in our change in liabilities transfers over here to a negative change in our cash. Now, our other assets here are current assets that we're looking at. Remember, due to the arithmetic change here, a re increase in our other assets would be a reduction in our cash. And same here for a reduction in our other assets would be an increase in our cash. So if, what we're doing here is we're not including any of our non-cash flows that are would be normal or that are included in net income and expenses. All we're doing is looking at what flows through this cash account here for these current liabilities and current assets that are recognized as revenues and expenses over here as part of net income or our cash provided by our operations. So looking at our debits and credits here in our T accounts, a increase here in our current assets, uh, a debit amount here would be a credit here or reduction in our cash. And looking over at our liabilities here, uh, an increase in our liabilities here would be an increase in our cash. And same for a reduction here in our current liabilities would be a reduction in cash. And also here for our current assets, any reduction in our current assets here would be an increase in our cash account. Our cash flow statement for operating activities, our cash inflows would be the revenues that we earned on, for the sale of goods and services or interest that we've earned here on debt in, instruments that we hold from other entities and dividends from other entities. And our cash outflows would be all those expenses or payments we make to our vendors, employees, uh, government entities for taxes and then other expenses. Now remember here when we're dealing with this cash provided by oper changing cash provided by operations we're looking at our current liabilities here and our current assets and what we're looking at is the cash uh, flow through these current liabilities and current assets that's flowing here into our net income as revenues and expenses. Okay, looking at our cash flow statement, we'd have a cash flow for operating activities, our investing activities, and our financing activities. And we'd have a complete listing here of those cash flows or those cash changes for each of these activities. And then we would total up for each of these activities the niche cash provided or used for the activity here. And then we'll go down here and look, we determine the net cash increase or decrease during the period for those activities here. And then we'd add back the beginning cash and cash equivalents that we had at the beginning of the period here. And then the difference here or totaling here the net cash increase or decrease plus this beginning cash equivalents here in cash would give us our cash balance at the end of the period. That would be what our cash flow statement is calculating.